the entrance of God's word brings what? Light. So the word is going to enter into you and establish light. So whatever is of darkness is going to run away as you hear the word. Believe it. I'm saying it is going to run away as you receive the word of God. It will run away. The entrance of God's word brings what? Light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Father. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. Thank you this morning. We honor you, Jesus. Nothing is too hard for you, O oh God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Mama, my auntie, say, I Karibisha katika ibada yetu ya subi ya leo Ungana nasi tunapomu ambudu mungu Mana na staili utukufu wote na sifa Sante bwana yesu Mshukuru ye Na staili utukufu Hallelujah Oh Thank you Jesus
Nakuwa abudu wana Umejane ma narema mungu Nakuwa abudu wana Umejane ma narema mungu Nakuwa abudu wana Umejane ma narema mungu Nakuwa abudu wana Wasahili shifa yesu Wasahili bada wana Wewe ni mungu Tunakutazama wewe wana Hey Unijifunua wakati Wa Shadrach Meshach na Benego Wewe ni mungu Wewe ni buwana Hehe Uliejonyesha kuwa hodari Katika moto Tunakuwa budu wewe Falme wa falme Tunakupenda Hebana Hebana Hehe Nyonyesha bwana katika tuno na simba bwana ukamtetea mtumishi wako Danieli wewe ni Mungu wa ajabu umejanema 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 bwana Hallelujah Worship you Jesus Love you Lord yeah. Hallelujah Uwezo wa 
bwana na wepo wa komana wepo wa bwana wanitosha haleluya haleluya Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Son of the Living God. Thank you because you are our Lord, our Master, the Captain of our salvation. Thank you because of your eternal grace, your eternal mercies and love upon our lives. Thank you for this opportunity of sharing your good news to your people. Lord, build our faith as we listen to your word. Empower us with your grace and show us what to do with the grace that you are releasing upon our lives. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Jesus is Lord. We are continuing with our sharing this morning. As I conclude on this session of knowing God through divine intervention. Now I request you to get ready for the lunch hour service where God's servant, Bishop Andrew Kakai, will be sharing the word of life together with us. God bless you. Let us go to God's word. I usually call it our morning meditation. This one gives you the strength to continue to face your day. And the challenge is, together with the blessings that God is going to be pouring in your life. God does things and when they happen, we can only say that this must be God who has done this. And that is why in, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 The word of God begins by saying I know You see you know God you are supposed to know You are supposed to experience God and there are things this God does then you learn to know that he is the one who has done it Ecclesiastes 3.14 I know that whatsoever God does, whatsoever, whatsoever God does, it shall be forever. There is a way God works. His ways are a permanent. God and His word are a permanent. Everything else can change but God and his word will remain for I know that whatsoever whatsoever God does it shall be forever nothing can be put to it nor anything taken from it then the Bible says and God does it God does it why it says that man should fear before him. God does things in order to marvel man. And you see when this happens, God puts a curiosity in man to seek to know the God who has done these things. So my prayer and also 
the desire of my heart for all of you who are with us in the service this morning and those who will be following later is that Jehovah God will do something in your life something in your ministry something will happen in the work of your hands that you will remain saying that this is God's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the doing of the Lord. Now, what I want you to capture in that scripture is that God is a doer of things that are beyond human imagination. And that is why we are calling them divine intervention. You see, when you come to the end of your wisdom, the end of your strength, your mighty, then, then something happens that is beyond your plan, your, your plan, beyond your connections. Then, that is the time God comes through to you. Then you say, wow. There is no way I could have escaped that except God being there for me. So this morning, expect this God to begin to show himself in your life. For whatever the Lord does, it shall be forever. The Bible says there is nothing you can do to that. Now in our meditation now from Luke 7, Luke chapter 7, I want you to see how Jesus, and as, as I share anything that Jesus did in the past, remember he is the same, Hebrews 13, 8. This Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So that which he was able to do in the past, he can do it now. And what he can do now, he can still do the same tomorrow. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. So Luke chapter 7 verse, verse, verse 11. Luke 7, 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. You see, Jesus was influential. There is nobody who can deny that. And everywhere Jesus was, there were multitudes. Multitudes men and women following to see the wonders of God. Others to receive their miracles and others were there to eat bread that he was able to make anywhere. But this time they were following him. Then verse 12, Now when he came near to the gate of the city, this is the city of Nain. The word of God says, Behold, there was a dead man carried out. There was a dead man. They were carrying this man out of the city when Jesus was coming into the city. I see God in one way or the other coming to meet with your challenge. God coming to meet with your dead situation. Jesus, the Son of God, is going to meet it head on. And you are going to be surprised of the outcome, divine intervention. The burial, this was a burial procession. They were going to bury this man. It means everything about 
the barrier was ready, was settled. But thank God, God was coming in the same city. And behold, there was a dead man carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. I want you to see how that situation is. This is a helpless widow with only one son that is now dead. No husband and there is no any other child left with her. The situation looks, looks ugly. There is no beauty at all. What we see is a situation of, of permanent separation with her son. Because now this woman is also a widow, meaning that the husband was already dead. So maybe there was no hope of her getting another child. The husband is gone and maybe her age is advanced and the son that was remaining is now dead. I want you to see the picture of this woman. Helpless woman. There is no hope of having a family or of seeing any of us of us of our child just there in the in the family in the home the situation was worse but listen we have a god somewhere and this is the god i want you to begin to see him in what we are calling divine interventions they are on their way to go and bury this son. But thank God, Jesus was entering into the city with his disciples. The Son of God, full of the Holy Spirit. The Son of God, full of power. The Son of God, full of dominion full of authority he was entering the city and you see everywhere Jesus went I read that scripture in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 the Bible says how God anointed Jesus how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and also he anointed him with the power. And the Bible says he went everywhere, everywhere doing good. He was healing all who were oppressed, oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Listen to that. It says for God was with him. So where God is and there is none. Where Jehovah is acknowledged, there is release of life. There is impartation of life. There is a wave of glory. There is a cloud of the presence of God that went with Jesus. And even as I speak now, where you are receiving God's word from, you are supposed to expect this divine cloud of God to come upon your life because there is something right now that is going to take place so long as your heart is open for the word of God this woman was let me repeat verse 12 slowly you see the picture now when he was come near to the gate of the city thank God there is no way God will ever come late in your life and you see he will never come early he will always come on the time because while they were at the gate of the city going to bury this son of this widow 
that was the exact time Jesus was entering the city with his disciples. Listen, whatever the enemy has already organized and finished about your life, Jesus, the Son of God, is going to stop it today. That is why you are receiving the word of God this morning. God will never come late. Humanly may appear a sieve is far away from you. A sieve is doesn't care or know what is happening in your life. Listen and allow the Spirit of God to bath this revelation in your life. God is in control of your life. God is in control of your ministry. God is in control of this nation of Kenya. And God is in control of this world. Don't think that God doesn't know what is happening. So the Bible says, Now when he came near to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother. The Bible doesn't leave anything hanging. It says the man was dead. The only son of his mother and she was a widow. This woman was in a world of her own. There is no way you could have told that woman I understand your situation. I know what you are going through. You see, we like telling people. We understand what they are feeling. We, we understand the weight of their families. The challenge of their financial situation. You see, we tell them we understand. But most of the time, we don't really understand. Think of a widow. The only son she has has died. No husband and no sons. And this woman probably was very old. No more, nobody was to come and marry her. And maybe have another child or other children. The situation was worse. Thank God. He knows exactly what is happening in your life. And whatever is going to be buried, Jehovah can reverse it now and you receive it alive in the hands of Jesus. And the Bible says, much people and the much people of the city was with her. You see, you can be surrounded by multitude, a whole city. But if there is no God in your life, your tears will continue. You see, sometimes we are deceived by crowds, deceived by multitudes of people. We think, and that is, this is common, we think if a, a church, for example, an assembly, has so many people, cars are packed outside, there is no room to put people. There is a tendency of concluding that God is there. No, not so. And I'm not saying that when there is big cloud of vehicles or whatever, I'm not saying God is also absent. No. What I'm saying is this. Your help will never come from multitude of people your help is with the one person. His name is Jesus, the Son of God. He has the power to do anything for your life. He has the power to take away sicknesses, to take away diseases from your system. He can turn around your life. He can turn your tears to cheers. 
He can turn your night into a morning. So trust him this morning. Give him everything that you call dead in your life. Allow it to meet with Jesus. Allow it to meet with Jesus in a prayer. Allow it to meet with Jesus in a praise. Hand over whatever seems to be dead in your life. Hand it over to Jesus and see what will happen. Thank, we give glory to God. Verse 13, Luke seven thirteen, The Bible says, And when the Lord saw her, glory to God, when the Lord saw her, you see there was no introduction. There was nobody who intervened between this woman and the Jesus. There was no there was no mediator between them. The Bible says when the Lord saw her this morning the eyes of God are watching your spirit, seeing what is happening in your business. The eyes of God are beholding your children, your wife, your husband. There is nothing to fear. The Bible says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth that he may show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is towards him. I think that it must be Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 chapter 16 verse 9 Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 the Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. The eyes of the Lord are running everywhere around the world, including in your house, including your business, your office, your plants, wherever you may be. The eyes of the Lord ran to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself, to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. You see, when your heart is towards God, you position yourself for divine intervention. Things are going to happen in your life. Because you see, I am not preaching to past time. I am sent to you. That is why I am expounding the word of God. According to his grace in my life. That you may see how real God is. And how easy he can intervene in your situation. And when the Lord saw her, Luke 7, 13, he had compassion on her. Jesus she was moved with the compassion. The compassion of God does not fail. The Bible says so in the book of Lamentation. So the Bible says, and the Lord saw her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And they said unto her, weep not. When you meet with Jesus, Jesus will not accompany other people to your burial. He will not accompany other people to go and bury your relative. There is no way Jesus will go with you to finish your ministry, to finish your health. That is to destroy your, your finances. He told this woman, I know what is happening. No husband, 
a normal child left with you and I know you are a widow but here I am Jesus appeared at the right time at the right place and now she is declaring to this woman fear not in other words from today stop weeping stop weeping and in the name of Jesus Christ I am saying the same word to somebody this morning weep not because the resurrection himself the resurrection himself life himself the way himself has come his name is Jesus the Bible says he had compassion on her and they said unto her weep not weep not and he came and they touched the bier and they that bore, bore him stood still and they said <laughs> young man I say unto thee young man I say unto thee arise glory to God what a demonstration of power Jesus is such a wonderful savior a wonderful God is coming to command your tears to stop this day in the name of Jesus he says to the woman weep not then he says to the young man that is already dead he says young man I say I like that I say I say I say unto thee arise and also say in the name of Jesus I say to you receive power to continue receive grace to move forward whatever is dead in your life to receive life right now in Jesus wonderful name he looked at this dead young man and he said the young man I say unto you arise verse 16 verse 15 and he that was past tense and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother glory to God the one who was already dead and in a coffin sat down and the Bible says he began to speak dead speaking the one who was dead is now speaking you see there is no closed case with God anything can be reversed the procession of the burial can be stopped by Jesus the son of the living God the word of God says and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he was and he delivered him to his mother whatever Satan has stolen from your hands from your family from our nation from the work of your hands Jesus in his name I decree receive restoration in the name of Jesus recover that which the enemy had taken away from your hands there is power in the name of the Lord Jesus verse 16 and there came a fear on all. You see, men were there crying and weeping. They were telling this woman, it is, shall be well, maybe. Or woman, we understand what is happening. But here comes another man. His name is Jesus, full of God full of the presence of God and he tells the woman 
it is over. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God. They glorified God, and they were saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. It is by divine intervention we see reality of God. This is the time we appreciate the reality and the presence of God when there is an intervention. So listen, if you have, you have a desire to know God, position yourself for divine intervention through the way you seek God, the way you serve him with your substance, the way you honor God by serving him, by declaring God's word, by becoming prayerful, be a seeker of God, and all the time avail yourself to the most High. You will be surprised by God manifesting himself through divine intervention. Those who are not born again, this Jesus is able to give you life eternal today. The way he raised this young man from the dead, you are going to be raised from death of sin. Death of sin. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner and I have no power to save myself. But I believe you died on the cross. You shed your blood for the remission of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, forgive me now. Wash me clean with your precious blood. I know you are buried in the grave. You rose again on the third day because of my justification. I confess with my mouth the belief of my heart that you, Jesus, you are the Christ. You are the Son of God. You are the Lord. And by faith, I receive you into my heart. And now I know I am forgiven. I am born again. I'm a child of God. Amen. Those who have prayed that prayer, Jesus has become your Lord and your God. Continue studying the word of God and continue talking to God as your Father. Glory to God. This is another opportunity God has given us to partner with Him in giving. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 6. I want to read this. Galatians 6, verse 6. The Bible says, Let him who receives in instruction, the Amplified Bible, let him who receives instruction in the word of God share all good things. You share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his support. The reason why God has allowed you to listen over and over again is because he has also laid a responsibility upon your life to support, as the Amplified Version says, to support the work of the ministry with your finances 
with anything that is called good. When information is there, you, my number is there 0720 and also our till number, church till number is there 846090. I want you to get ready because exact 1 that p.m. God's servant, Bishop Andrew Kakai, will be with us in the service to share the word of life together with us. Invite many and get ready for what the Lord will be releasing through him to us. Shalom. Shalom. Oh, <laughs> 